Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I do want to say thank you for everybody that subscribed and continued the growth of the channel. If you are not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that down below if you enjoy this content. So we're going to get into some fishing. You see, I'm actually out at a gas platform here in the Gulf of Mexico, about 50 feet of water. Lots of nasty storms have been passing through. We may end up going a little bit deeper, but I have a nice live well of some live menhaden croaker a whole bunch of stuff in there now the setup i'm going to be using is just a little king rig a mackerel rig it's 43 pound single strand wire black barrel swivel coming down to a size four hook with a little stinger attachment with some more single strand wire to another size six hook now you adjust the length of your rear hook to the front hook depending on what kind of bait you're using we're using pretty large bait so I'll have it set out about four and a half inches. Now my setup today is a Penn Slammer DX 5500. This is 50 pound braid on a live bait star handcraft rod in a seven foot half ounce to two and a half ounce. So it's got that little extra tip on there so we don't throw our bait off. So I cast net this morning at the boat ramp and managed to get some really nice live pogies. Look at that. These are big, healthy jokers too. But I'm gonna hook it through the top of the head, pretty much where that hard cartilage is. There we go. And I'm gonna run my stinger hook right behind that dorsal. And now if something decides to come bite that in half, hopefully they get a piece of my hook too. But that is a perfect live bait right there. And I hope we can pick us up a nice king mackerel this morning. Someone go ahead and toss this back behind the boat. Let the current kind of carry it towards the rig. I'm actually going to set it in a rod holder, crank up the main motor, and bump troll it. That means I'm going to bump it in gear, out of gear. In gear, out of gear. Keep it very still. Let me get it straightened out real quick. See where my line is. Okay, there it is. I'm just going to go very slow, and I'm going to take it out of gear let my boat kind of settle down and then once it stops i'm going to bump it back into gear again the whole time around this rig until we can get us a fish fish on almost lost my rod too that's why you want a rod leash don't do what i did just now <laughs> fish on i started out with the light drag so we'll gradually uh tighten it just a little bit there we go i always start with the light drag that didn't take long <laughs> almost lost my whole setup in the process that's why you want to do rod leashes and i need to practice what i preach on that one and leash my rod up anytime i'm using these rail mount rod holders but i'm glad i was able to save that dang almost saw that go in the water i have no clue what i have this morning but it's coming right back to the boat i bet that's a king really liking the boat <laughs> get away from the motor <clears throat> come on yeah king mackerel king mackerel on the pogey he's still really green still really green <laughs> yo that's a nice one too that's a perfect schoolie size <sighs> come on let's get this gaff on it uh, belly gaff but i got it first shot woohoo nice king he annihilated that pogey look at that choke that joker down <laughs> almost lost my rod but look at that king mackerel Woo! that is awesome what a great way to start the morning <laughs> that is awesome y'all i love king mackerel catching them is so fun and this size right here is a nice schoolie size they don't taste half bad either if you eat a whole bunch of them and get the real large ones they can be pretty high in mercury content so to each their own but he's not going to go to waste but look at them teeth that's why you use wire leader for them so especially in this dirty water they're they're really not that leader shy but absolutely love that fresh live pogey 
just bump trolling with the current landed this excellent specimen of a king mackerel that was a beautiful fish i am going to have to tie up a new leader because he twisted this one up pretty bad so if you see they they swim really fast in circles and i kind of let that one go under the boat a couple of times as you saw but i was still able to land it thank goodness to this live bait rod it's got a much uh, flexible tip that's what you kind of want when it comes to uh those fish so you don't pull the hook because they hit things so quick but that stinger rig worked perfect for that big pogey and then i am going to have to tie up a new leader look how twisted this one is so this one's kind of beyond the repair but this is all i'm using the afw tooth proof 44 pound stainless steel single strand leader so let me get another leader tied up and get another bait out now for this leader i usually do a haywire twist so it shows you how to do it on the back. Also, you, there's plenty of videos on the internet to do it. They even make a tool. Uh, mine sometimes turn out pretty, sometimes they turn out ugly, but it takes just a few seconds, so I'll show you. So make an X, twist the wire, don't wrap it. About five times. Okay, and then turn your tag in 90 degrees. And then this is where you're gonna do tight wraps. I do it about another five times. Sometimes they turn out nice, sometimes they don't. You wanna get them as uniform as possible. Okay, so not the prettiest, but it will work. I've actually hooked a lot of big sharks on this same technique. And then instead of cutting that off with snips, all I do is I rotate that tag in back and forth a few times. Careful not to kink your leader. And you'll feel it loosen up if you did it right. and it'll break off nice and flush so you don't poke yourself your line doesn't get stuck in it but mainly so you don't poke yourself it's nice and flush so simple rig it may sound complicated but it's really not so i just finished that rig so it's haywire twist to that hook another haywire twist and another twist these are four extra strong hooks too because you never know what you're going to catch or what's going to bite your bait so I like using these 4X strong mustads so you don't have to have that fear of it bending out. Other things are gonna break before your hook. So I may end up making another drift here, but we do have a boat that just pulled up a uh, supply vessel. I don't wanna get in his way. So I may end up going to the ships or another rig. Supply vessels here. When you see him pull up to the platform, you wanna kind of be observing and make sure you're not in his way. See, if I was having my trolling motor on that side of the I guess gangway or whatever you want to call it, I don't know, the landing, then I would have been in his way. So just be observant when you're fishing these because ultimately these are put here for production and a business, not fishing, but fishing is great around them. And there it goes. I'm about to leave too and go find some fish. Those things are pretty cool. They're fast boats for their size. I'm telling you the amount of steel in these things are it's astounding. So cool. So I'm at the ships. I have this live pinfish and see if we can coerce one of these fish to bite. There's no shortage of bait out here. Oh, fish on and off every time. Back on, back on. Come on. Oh, fish on. Mm, good one, good one. Yeah, buddy. Oh yeah, that's a heavy one. On the pinfish too. I hope it's a cobia. I don't think I've shown a legal cobia on the channel before. We'll see if today's the day. It's fighting pretty hard. I just don't want it to get stuck in that anchor chain. Uh, come on, buddy. Come on. I've been going out. I've been chasing after you a while. Oh yeah, cobia. Nice one too. Nice one. Come on. <laughs> on the pinfish. 
I got it's still gonna be real green. Uh, come on. Uh, huh. Nice cobia. Uh, get up here, buddy. I just don't want it to break me off on the anchor chain. Woo, it got some weight to it. I gotta get around the trolling motor. <clears throat> Last thing I wanna do is lose this nice fish to the trolling motor. <sighs> That's a nice cobia. I'm just happy to see it, but I'll be happier once it gets on deck. Yeah, buddy. <sighs> they have to be 36 inches long to keep. Such a nice fish. Man, they have some power on. <laughs> they have some power, I tell you that. Woo! Come on, buddy. That is awesome. I just need to get his head up out of the water. Come on, buddy. Nice cobia. That's awesome. <sighs> he has another small cousin with him. Mm. Get up here. You all head shaker. <laughs> there he is right there. Y'all see him? <clears throat> Get his head up. He got some second wind on him. <laughs> got a second wind on him. <sighs> Don't go in that anchor chain, buddy. I just want to get you on deck. <clears throat> yeah. Nice. Hard fighter. Hard fighter. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Mm. Just get up here. Come on. Don't do that to me. <sighs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no gaff. I'm going to measure this one real quick. I got to be 36 inches long. I think this one's going to make it though. Look at that mouth. I kept on missing them. They, you know, they were mouthing my bait. This one's definitely going to make it. I don't even know why I bother measuring them. Look at this baby remora. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Woo. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I am so excited. I don't think I've shown a legal cobia on the channel and we're already at 70,000 subscribers. So this is awesome. <laughs> I've shown little small ones that we've caught, but this is a, you know, not quite hundred pounder. That's a solid 30 pound fish. Whew. Man, what a beautiful, it's beautiful cobia. Delicious eating, powerful, strong, powerful fish, big mouth, man. <laughs> He's still slapping me. Thank you, Lord, for putting you there. And I'm glad that you're illegal. Ah, you want to see a dude get beat up by Cobia? <laughs> okay. I don't want to disrespect this fish, but dude, that thing just kind of, uh, uh, what's the word? It slapped me. <laughs> now, you're allowed two Cobia per person in the state of Alabama at 36 inches this one was a 45 inch fish beautiful choker these things taste so good i don't know if y'all can tell but i'm super excited about getting it on video he was came out a lot bigger than i thought he was going to be when he was deep down in the water so you have to worry about that anchor chain right there getting wrapped around but i'm going to throw him on ice and i'm done fishing even though you're allowed two per person and i know there's some more down there because i marked them 
that's all my family can really eat and I already have a bunch of fish in the freezer I'm gonna give that king mackerel away because I have a king mackerel in the cooler as well I'm gonna give that away to a friend whoever wants it I'm gonna post it on Facebook so that's plenty of meat for me but we're gonna take this beautiful fish home and cook it up you know what's crazy is I almost slept in this morning it was pouring rain at the house I looked outside my alarm went off at like 4 30 and I'm like uh, and I just watched the radar for about 30 minutes and it was clear out in the Gulf so I got a little wet coming out but this is like the probably the second time I'm getting rained on and it's barely anything but I am going to head back in because I'm happy with my catch I want to get some more ice on it and that's enough meat for my family and I so that's awesome well I appreciate y'all for tuning in if you enjoy this content so far don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'm going to see y'all back at the boat ramp pull this trolling motor up fell off that's always like my least favorite part all right i'm gonna see y'all back at the boat ramp it's a rainy day but a great fishing day usually days like these turn out to be very productive it seems to get the fish in a feeding frenzy it's a wet ride <laughs> wet ride <laughs> it's choppy gopro don't do it justice it's nothing huge swells or nothing it's just choppy and rainy All right, I'm back. <laughs> and it's raining. Time to load up the boat and head home. So I am back home. It is terrible weather. Still raining. But I'm going to clean this fresh cobia. What a beautiful fish. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. This video is brought to you by Sword. They do provide the fillet knives for the channel, so that is awesome. If you want to check them out or even pick you up a shark knife like this, they have the seven inch, some nine inchers. They even have the serrated, which I may end up using some of the serrated too. I'll include a link down in the description below. Without further ado, I'm going to fillet up this cobia. They have a very large head. They do have some cheek meat here that we can get out, but their head, hear how hard that is? See? where it goes from that to that that's where you want to start your cut so and then come on down behind the pectoral and then flay it just like any other fish so there we go it's gonna be fat fillet i love it now there may be some fish juices so if you don't want to see this portion you can skip ahead and this is for educational purposes to show you how to properly consume organic meat like this so if you do see fish juices on YouTube, it's for educational purposes. <laughs> I'm gonna flip it over, make life easy. And then rotate your knife. And just like any other fish, we're gonna go down the dorsal. Just keeping your knife tight to the bone. You don't wanna miss any meat. sharp knife helps a lot so all the way down to the tail just slowly opening up that fillet now on bigger fish like this i actually like to go through the bottom as well we come right along their tail fin here same thing open up that fillet and then just follow that bone down And then just take the fillet off just like you would any other fish. Staying close to the bone. Try not to miss any meat. It don't have to be perfect. All right, so once you fillet it off, like I said, just like any other fish, didn't do too bad, didn't miss too much meat. See, you can hear the bones. Now, I accidentally cut over to the other side. If you do that, just pull your knife out, find that bone again, and come back down. See, they have a lot of belly meat that will end up cutting out. And that head has a lot of meat too, but I'm gonna turn that into blue crabs. <laughs> Here's a nice slab of cobia. Skin still on. I'm gonna do just like anything else. Just cut that tail section off. There we go. Now it's time to skin this fish. So I normally stick my two fingers there and leave just a little bit of meat, nothing that we're gonna miss. So I have something to hold on to. On smaller fish, you can leave the tail attached there and use the weight of the fish but this one i took it off because that's a lot to manage at one time 
and we're going to go through use a sharp knife i kind of point up a little bit and leave some meat on the skin because you see that red meat you don't want to have too much of that on your fillet so once you get at this point it should be real fluid See, leaving a little bit of meat to where our fillet is not completely tainted with that whole bloodline. All right, almost there. I probably should have used the nine inch for this one, but it'll be all right. So there we go. There's that cobia skin, just like that. And that's gonna go in the crab trap as well. And if you leave a little bit on, you know, nobody's perfect. I'm not, definitely not perfect. Just trim it off. See, no big deal. And then I'm gonna trim off some of this red meat. Bleeding your fish out helps with that a lot too. But this is kind of like fat. Now I'm not a biologist or anything, so I don't know exactly what you would call it. But leaving that on, it's not gonna hurt you. It's just gonna make it taste a little bit off. So I normally cut that bloodline out. And cobia to me is very similar to grouper out of all the fish to compare it to i think so that's a big slab now i want to cut this rib cage out now a lot of times you can fillet around the rib cage but i didn't in this case just gonna follow those bones down see without losing too much meat now you can still cook that and pick that meat off that's not bad but like i said it's gonna turn into some blue crabs now they do have pin bones that you could take a pair of needle nose pliers or nail clippers and pull those pin bones but normally I cut out that red meat there anyway, that bloodline, so those come out. So you can cut right along. There we go. And cut that out. I'm pretty picky when it comes to my fish. I don't like a lot of bones or red meat in there. And now that's a beautiful piece of cobia. I'm just gonna cut it into manageable pieces. I can put it in a Ziploc bag so we can cook it up or take it to a restaurant. So I've cut out a lot of that bloodline. I still have a ton of meat here. And look at these loins. This is from the upper loin of that fish. Look how fresh and tasty that's gonna be. Beautiful fresh meat. So now I have to do the other side. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you all that, how, look at the thickness of that white flaky meat, just like a grouper in my opinion. Alrighty y'all, I am cleaned up. I've been wet all day. Uh, finally happy to be dry. But uh, I have my cobia here, just enough for us to cook up and eat the rest. I'm gonna vacuum seal and freeze because that's a lot of meat. But I'm actually over here at Mikey's Seafood in Gulf Shores, Alabama, which I used to live just a couple miles down that way. I used to come here a lot in high school. The food's delicious. And we're gonna have them cook up our fillets. Let me show you them real quick and then we're gonna go in and get seated. It's kind of dark in there, so bear with me with the lighting. Check that out. That's plenty of meat for all of us. Mom, dad, hammer it. My brother is here. Which you can do this too. If you go on a charter, if you go fishing or something, it has to be cleaned already, but you can bring your catch over here, pay, and you get some sides and they cook it for you however you like. So pretty good idea. So I will see y'all inside. All right, we're going to go in with our fish over here at Mikey's. So we're going to choose. So here's the you catch them, we cook them. It says it'll cook the fresh catch, fried, broiled, blackened, pan grilled, or sauteed. So if you don't like any of those, then probably should uh, sweat, <laughs> eat something else. <laughs> and then you get a whole bunch of different sides and stuff. So we just let our server know whenever they come to the table that we have our own fish and then we can all choose how we want it cooked. Alrighty, so if you notice our menus are gone and our fish has gone back to the kitchen. We decided all just to do fry, just to make life real easy and it's hard to beat delicious southern fried fish. That is weird. Oh, that is awesome. Check that out. That's a lot of fish too. <laughs> Man, that's hard to beat. And a lot of corn fritters, those things are delicious. I cannot wait to bite into a piece of that. Alrighty, all our fish is here and all the sides that we chose arrived at the table. You know, ready to eat? <laughs> all right, well, go ahead, dig in. Let me know what you think. I'm gonna grab a piece of cobia, try a bite. It's pretty hot right now, but uh, I have to try a bite it. Mmm. Man, that is, that is amazing. <laughs> I haven't had cobia in a long time. That is some delicious tasting fish right there. 
It's kind of like a more flaky, tender grouper. We'll see what everybody else thinks of it. What do you think, bud? Hammer things are good, too, so that's pretty good. Let's try some cheese grits. What's that? Mmm. Good? All right. Delicious. Heck yeah. Mm. So good. Thank you. So that is four goods. And uh, <laughs> they're all taking another <laughs> bite, so it must be. So you know it, they're not lying. All right, that is an amazing looking plate right there. Some new potatoes, cheese grits, corn fritters, hush puppies. There's even more sides. Thank you, Lord, for putting it there. I'm gonna enjoy this delicious food. Let's try a piece of Kobe and, and some cheese grits. Mm. All right, time to go. Tell you what, we are full, finally, kind of stopped raining it's still drizzling well i appreciate y'all for watching we're going to go ahead and get home if you enjoyed content like this and want to see more don't forget to hit that subscribe button down at the bottom of this video and i know it's kind of dark so you probably can't see me that good but that was a pretty awesome day out there solo trip out in the gulf of mexico but we'll see you on the next bama saltwater fishing video don't forget to check out all those companies that support the channel down below i want to thank the good lord up above for everything he does for us and we'll see you later